Good morning, Modern Steaders. In this morning's video, we're gonna go over what you need to know before you get your chicks and what items you're gonna need to have on hand before you bring them home. The first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need a brooder to raise your chicks in. Depending on how many chicks you have, that's gonna depend on the size of your brooder. We have this brooder right here that we built for around 30 bucks and with this can hold right around 25 chicks. You're gonna need a good feeder. You're gonna want some sort of platform to stick under your feeder and water because the chicks are always gonna be digging in their bedding and kicking it out. I call this our doormat. Put the feeder on it and I'll, we have them under our waterer. If the chicks are kicking the for us, it's wood shavings up. It's gonna fall down below. If they have wood shavings on their feet, they're gonna wipe their feet off on the hardware cloth, and then it's gonna fall through and not get in the feeder as much. As you can see, you're gonna need a, some kind of water for your chick. We have an automatic water hooked up to a five gallon bucket. Take mine off so I can clean it right now. We're using an automatic bell waterer. This way we're not constantly having to fill up their waterer. I check it throughout the day, make sure they've got a good clean supply. If not, I find out what's going on with it, clean it if I need to, and add more water. You're gonna need some kind of heat source for your chicks. You can use a heat lamp. You can pick them up online. You can pick them up at your local tractor supply. You can pick up your local feed store. You can get a red light like this. They also make a ceramic one that puts off heat but doesn't put off any light. For bedding, I like to use wood shavings. I also like to clean my coop out once or twice a week depending on how dirty it gets. Some people like to add fresh bedding to it without removing the old bedding, which if that's the way you want to do it, it's perfectly fine. The reason I don't like to do that is it gives the chicks more bedding to kick up and get into their feeder and water up. I'm putting our wood shavings, spent bedding into our old drain sack. We've got about, I don't know, probably two to three feet of snow outside still. So once the snow's gone and I can get to my compost pile, I'll put this right in my compost pile and compost it. If you don't have a compost pile, this is some great material to start one with. I'm gonna put a link to a video right here that shows you how we made our chick brooder in the setup. <laughs> After we built the chick brooder, I kept my eye open at our local hardware stores and I picked up a remnant of linoleum. I lined the inside of the chick brooder with it and it makes it for really easy cleanup. Now we don't have to worry about getting the chick brooder completely clean. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you get a chick starter. You can pick that up at your local feed store or tractor supply. We like using this turbo feeder because it holds a lot of food and stays nice and clean. And this way our chicks always have a good supply of feed in front of them. And by the chicks always having a good supply of feed in front of them, that means they'll grow 
faster and they'll grow up a lot healthier. The same thing goes with the automatic water. The chicks are always going to have a good clean supply of water in front of them. Having this set up, as long as you check it once a day and make sure the water's flowing, they're not going to run out of water. And that's just going to give you a happier, healthier chick. If you can always keep good, clean water and food in front of your chicks, you're going to be starting your chicks off right and without a lot of problems. I hope the camera doesn't pick up too much of the wind noise. We're out here in the outdoor kitchen now and we've been having wind gusts up to 17 miles per hour today. It's crazy how windy it is. But I wanted to come out here and hit on a few more topics of things you need to know when you're raising chicks and chickens. We've been getting a bunch of questions lately on that topic and the main question that inspired today's video is from Mamasaurus that we got on our Instagram account. They were asking us to do a video on what new owners should know before buying their first chickens. So that's what inspired today's video. So thank you, Mama, Mommy Soros. I believe I'm saying that right. So a few other things I keep in mind when I'm thinking about raising chickens and buying my chicks is I want to know what I am buying my chickens for. Am I buying them to raise them for meat? I go, all right, I'm raising them for meat. Why am I raising them for meat? Do I want a fast growing bird? If I want a fast growing bird and a lot of meat, I'm going to go with the Cornish cross. If I want a bird for meat, but I'm not looking for a ton of meat on the carcass, so that's not my number one focus. I want a good quality, flavorful bird. And I want to be able to make a good, flavorful bone broth later on from the carcass. I'm going to go with a heritage breed. This year, we're raising, we're going to be raising Freedom Rangers. They're supposed to be a cross between a Cornish and a heritage breed. Not that they're cross-like bloodlines, but they're supposed to be good amount of meat on them, not as big as the Cornish, but more flavorful, like a heritage, but more meat. So this year we're going to be trying those breeds out, and we're doing a comparison there. Last year we raised Cornish crosses and heritage breeds for meat birds, and we enjoy eating the heritage breeds more because they have more flavor and they have a better texture to them and the bone broth that they make is delicious and we can make some awesome soups and stews and you name it with that bone broth we've been doing that about once a week <clears throat> so if you want to raise them for meat those are a few questions to ask yourself what what's your end goal and then if you want to raise them for eggs I ask myself okay we want egg layers but what are we going for are we going for a ton of eggs? Are we go, do we want a large egg? Do we want nice looking eggs? Like do we want a nice variety of colors? Do we want a brown egg, a dark brown egg, a green egg? That's just something you need to know. Are you keeping these for your family? Do you want to have something that looks beautiful on your table? Do you want to be able to have a classy egg to sell at a farmer's market? Or are you just looking for a production? And there's different breeds for that. We raise the Bard Rocks here. They're a good hardy breed for us in our northern climate. They do very well for us. They produce a good medium sized to large brown egg. Now we're raising some well summers and they produce a beautiful dark brown egg with speckles on it. So it just kind of ups the classiness of the egg. And the chicks in the basement are Novagins. Those are going to produce a large brown egg. And then we have some Easter egg layers that are going to produce a colorful egg and a more nice looking egg. And that's what we're going for with the birds that we're just getting to adding to our flock is we want a bird that is going to have a better looking egg just because we want to have a nice looking egg. So that's what we're going for and that's the breeds we're looking for. So just ask yourself, what do I want out of it? Do I want an egg? What kind of egg? What, what are the eggs for? And then you also want to know 
what area am I in? What's my climate? If you're in an older climate like us, you're gonna want a good hardy breed. You have Novergins, they're from Norway. The Easter egg layers that we got, they're supposed to be a really good hardy breed. Their Bodrocks are very hardy. Rhode Island Reds, Icelandic chickens. And if you're in a more warmer climate, research the breeds that work good for you in your area. And then are you gonna want a dual purpose breed? One that's a good egg layer, but you can also use it for meat. The Turbo Chick Feeder, our Automatic Chick Water, and our Brooder Light are from Coops and More. There's gonna be a description and a link down below for Coops and More. And if you use the promo code LUMNA, you get 10% off your order and free shipping. Just to let you know, they are affiliate links. Another thing you're gonna to need to think about before you get your chicks is what are they gonna be using for housing? What are you gonna put up after they're out of their chick brooder and they're outside? Do you want a mobile coop, one that you can move around? Do you want a stationary coop? Do you want a bigger coop that's kind of stationary that you can move around? How do you want to raise your chickens and what are you looking for? We have a few different style chicken coops here. We have our $30 chicken tractor that we can build in 30 minutes, which is great for putting meat birds in. We can move them around once to two times a day, get them out on pasture, get them eating bugs, get them eating the grass, fertilizing our lawn and our fields for us, and we get better meat, better quality food, and they, their carcass has more flavor, has more fat, but the good fats that you need. And I'll put a link right here to that video. We also have a hoop style chicken tractor that you can walk into. You can raise your meat birds in it. We've been able to raise our egg layers in it. I put a nesting box on the back and that we can drag around our pasture and our lawn. I'll put a link to that video right here. Justin Rhodes makes a chick shaw that you can move around very easily. He also makes an A-frame chicken tractor that you can move around easily. We have New York City, which is a bigger, it's a chicken coop that is mobile that we can put behind our tractor. You can put behind a pickup truck, you can move it around, and then we can put electric poultry netting out, and we can let our chickens stay in an area for a week to a month, and then move them around. And that way it's less maintenance, a bigger area that they get to free range in, and just less moving we have to do. If there's any questions I didn't answer for you, leave them in the comments down below. Send us an email, go over to our website, lumnaacres.com. You can contact us that way. You can sign up for our newsletter over there and stay in contact with us through the newsletter. And we just wanted to thank you for watching our video today, and coming along on our journey with us. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, now is a great opportunity to go on down below, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications while you're there. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.